And hello, everyone. Welcome to WeaverCast. WeaverCast is a regular podcast where we go over tips and tricks for Rapid Weaver and web design. I am Joe Workman, your host. I'm an indie Mac and web developer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. This is going to be show number 24. It's Thursday, April 24th, and WeaverCast is never longer than 15 minutes. So let's get started. So today, uh, we're going to go over some really cool stuff. Uh, some stuff that I see a lot of people kind of doing wrong, right? I get, you know, people send me their projects. I see what they do and I go, oh, why do you do that? Oh, and and the, the bone I'm going to pick today is the vast overuse of the spacer stack. Now, there's many spacer stacks out there. And I don't want to say you could completely trash it from your system, but most people, the way they use it, like 99% of the time, you don't need it. I mean, because all those features are just built into every single stack. You don't need the spacer stack. Um, now, Will Woodgate has one. Uh, his spacer stack actually has a couple nice little features. Uh, like it, you can do like percentage height. And I can see that, again, like maybe 1% of the time where you could potentially want that. But most of the time, just adding space to your page and pixels is not needed. Because, again, you can do that with everything with every stack you have that ability built in so um it also has less clutter on the page less spacer stacks less clutter less stacks on the page things move a little bit nicer they're easier to work with so without further ado let's uh, jump on in and uh see what i'm talking about so let's start off by showing you a few examples of use cases that i see the most for the spacer stack in this top example, we'll see that uh, I have an image and then I have some text over on the right in a two column stack. Now, a lot of times people want to actually, you know, lower the amount of text so that the, the kind of maybe the top of the image lines up nicer with the text. So a lot of times what they'll do is they'll add a spacer stack above it. Let's look at that in preview. So as we see here, uh, the text is actually brought down. Now, how can we do this without actually using the spacer stack? Let's go ahead and remove the spacer stack. And if we look here, my text is way above the image and I don't want that. So what we could do is we can easily add built-in features that are in every single stack. And that's called margins and padding. So essentially what we wanna do is we wanna add a top margin. So if we were to add, let's say 40 pixels okay, to the top of this section, we'll notice that we have exactly what we had with our spacer stack. We've now lowered our uh, text by 40 pixels, and we've only done it within the actual text stack. Uh, I didn't need to add any new stacks on the page to accomplish this. It, uh, it's all built into every single stack. Now, what you'll notice with the margin settings inside the stacks, is that I clicked on the detailed margin settings. This allows me to actually provide exact pixel dimensions that I want for top, bottom, left, or right. If I didn't check this box, essentially this setting would apply margins to all four sides. So by default, if I were to slide this all the way to the right, I would get a 20 pixel margin, so a 20 pixel space around the outside of my stack, around the top, bottom, left, and right. But in this situation, we only want to adjust the top. So you click on detailed margins, and this allows us to actually um, set the 40 pixel margins to just the top part of our paragraph. And that's exactly what we wanted. Now in the second example, I have two columns of text. And a lot of times people will have uh, multiple sections of text, and they don't want the bottom sections to line up. So if we look at this in preview, we'll notice that I have a, a section of text at the top and my text on the right is a little bit longer. And then however, I want a um, my second sections below it to actually line up. So I want, I want my headers to line up here. And what people do is they'll put a spacer stack right here in order to make sure that their uh, the text and their bottom sections line up properly. This is not the way you want to do it. And ultimately, really why you don't want to do this is if this were a responsive site um, and you were to shrink down uh, to a mobile, 
basically this you have a huge white space uh, on your mobile phone because uh, the spacer stack is going to take up in this case I think 300 pixels. So how do we fix this? Essentially what we want to do is uh, we want to delete the spacer stack obviously and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new uh, two column stack below this. So what I've done here is I've actually added a second two column stack below my original two column stack. And then inside that second two column stack, I've added the other sections of text. And what this will do is it'll actually line these up perfectly. So as you see, when we look at this in preview, we have our top two columns are nicely uh, displayed and our bottom two columns of text are lined up exactly the way we want them. No space or stack required. And what's great with this layout is in a mobile uh, device, in a responsive design, uh, all these texts will flow nicely underneath each other so that you won't have any extra white space. Now earlier I had shown you how we can adjust margins to add spacing around a stack. I didn't really go over padding and what is the difference between margins and padding and when should you use what? Well, to understand this more, let's jump into the CSS box model. Now here is a common diagram that you may have seen if you use the Safari Dev Inspector. And this is called the CSS box model. And every single stack abides to this rule. In this diagram, we notice in the center, we have our content. In this example, it's a 100 by 100 pixel square, okay? And then after your content, the padding is what is added after that. So if we wanted to add 10 pixel padding, it would add uniformly to the content. Outside of the padding is then the border. So whatever pixel dimensions that you add to the border will be added to the outside of the padding. Then we have margins and the margin lands outside of the border. Okay, so if we add a border and we want to add spacing outside of the border of a stack, we would need to add a margin. Okay, now outside of the margin is something called offsets. And offsets aren't actually defined within stacks. It's not something that you can set. However, there are stacks out there such as my target stack that actually allow you to uh, do these offsets. And this is where you can actually define the positioning. So you can actually move it, you know, five pixels to the left or actually, you know, make it relative to the browser and add a top position and left positioning and things of that nature. So offsets are kind of uh, a specialized thing and check out my target stack if that's something that you're interested in. However, everything else is done within every single stack has this ability. Obviously, the, the content uh, size of your content is defined by what you add to the stack. Then you can add padding around that, which is contained within a border, which then you can add space around that border for margins. Let's see this in action. So here I've added just a plain, vanilla, simple text stack to the page. Okay. Now to see the area content area a little bit easier, what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a background color. So just make the background color gray. So that's a little bit easier to see what we're doing here. Now, right now, my text takes the entire width of my box, right? If we preview this, we'll notice that the text takes up the entire width and height, and we have no, you know, nice background border. It's not very attractive. So we can fix that really easily just by simply adding some padding. Now I'm also gonna to go to the, uh, this view mode to make it a little bit easier to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the padding here. And as we see, as I increase the padding to 20 pixels, we have our, basically our content is shrunk down by 20 pixels and we now have a 20 pixel border between or padding between the, our edge of our content area and our actual content. Okay, so if we preview this now, we'll see that we have a nice border around our content. 
Now let's go to the next level, right? Let's go ahead and um, let's say we want to add some margins. Actually, let's go ahead and add the border because we said the next level was border. So now we have a border. Okay, so I go ahead and in my stacks, let's set our border to be four pixels and black. Okay, so this adds a border around our padding area of four pixels and the color is set to black. Now, obviously, if we want to add more space outside of the border, and this is basically if we wanted to have multiple stacks and have some space between them, we would have margins. So we could add a margin of, let's say, 20 pixels. Now, if we didn't have any border at all, if we set the border to zero, basically we would have a padding of 20 pixels of our content and then a margin of empty blank space around our content area, which includes the padding. Now let's see how we can use margins to actually apply spacing between our items. So here I have the same boxes, I've, I've copied and pasted it, and I've removed all the margins. And if we preview this, we'll notice that our boxes that we created are butted up right next to each other. That doesn't look very attractive. So what we can do is we can simply add some margins. And I'm gonna add a 20 pixel margin around each stack. And we'll notice that we now have some margin all along the side and uh, we have some nice space in between. And as I've shown you before, if you actually wanna customize and do some detailed margins, you can easily do that by clicking on the detailed margins. Then you can set how much pixels you want on the top, bottom, left, and right. So let's say on the top and bottom, we wanted 40 pixels, or let's say, let's say 20 pixels. And on the left and right, we wanted 40 pixels. Okay, you can then easily, you know, manipulate exactly what you want in terms of the margins. Now this is also available, the detailed border width and detailed paddings, if that's something that you need. Well, I hope you enjoyed this podcast, everyone, today. Uh, you know, hope you like the CSS box model. Use it, learn it, love it. It is there. It's available in every single stack, right? So, you know, make your stacks page a little bit cleaner. Don't have spacer stacks everywhere. Use margins, use paddings to your benefit. So, um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'm at Joe Workman on all the various internets, Twitter, app.net. You can always reach us at support at joeworkman.net. And uh, please send us your show ideas. Uh, we always want to know what you want to learn. So uh, help us out there. And as always, if you are subscribing to this on iTunes, go ahead and leave a review or two. Uh, well, I guess you can't leave, leave two, huh? So leave a review. Um, I'd love it. Uh, get some star ratings going on. Uh, that would be awesome. So I hope you have a great day, everybody. As always, check out my great products because they bring these podcasts to you for free. JoeWorkman.net, great Mac and Rap Weaver add-ons. Do it now. Go. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.